Hello, Keith Ruck here at VengeMachinery.org. So today, I think what we're going to do is we're going to tram this milling machine in. And when I say tram it in, uh, the, that's the term that you use when you get your head set where it's perfectly square uh, with the table that you're working off of. Um, and, you know, I've, I've done a video on this before where I used uh, a cylinder square. It's a little trick that I learned a long time ago. It's a real quick and easy way of doing it. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to start by tramming it using the cylinder square. Uh, but then I'm going to come in and we've got this new tool uh, that was sent to us from, from a viewer. This is a product that they make uh, from Boring Research. Uh, we're going to actually use this indicator to check and see how square I'm really getting things uh, with my cylinder square. Uh, so anyway, that's going to be the game plan. We're going to start by using cylinder square. I'll show you that trick again and then we'll come in here and check our work. All right, so method number one here. This is a cylinder square that I use. This is actually a, a magnetic cylinder square. So there's a magnet on the bottom. It comes in here. This has been ground square. It's a, it's a cylinder, so it's square all the way around. Now, I have to admit, um, I bought this uh, cylinder square used, and I've never really had any real good way to check this to see how accurate it actually is. I've always just been working on the assumption that it's square. And uh, that's probably not a very good assumption, uh, but uh, based on past experience, I think it's pretty darn close. It may not be exactly square, but it's pretty darn close. But here's how you would use this method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the quill all the way down on this uh, machine. And I'm basically going to uh, square things up off of the quill itself. So this is a ground and hardened quill in here. And, you know, in theory, it should be square with things going up and down. Now, granted, if you have an old worn out milling machine that has wear in this, it may not be uh, as accurate as a new one, but still, it should be a pretty good indication. I'm going to take my cylinder square and I'm just going to butt it up right against that. And then uh, using a light from behind, I can come in here and I can tell, okay, it's touching in the top, but there's a little gap in the bottom. So now um, I'm just going to come in here and make a little adjustment. I'm going to pull that bottom end. And now it looks like it's touching all the way down. So that should be square. I'm going to take my wrench here and uh, tighten my head back up. And I'll go back and check it again after I tighten it, uh, just to make sure things haven't moved uh, just from tightening up the head. So I come in here again now, again, put my light behind it, and it looks pretty good. Now you're seeing a little bit of light, but it's an even amount all the way up and down. It doesn't look like the top and the bottom are any different. So I'm going to call it square in that axis. And uh, now the next thing I'm going to do is we'll come around here and uh, move the square out to the front of the table, or the front of the, uh, the uh, quill. And we'll do this again. And I can tell already, just looking behind here, that it's touching at the bottom. There's just the least little bit of light at the top. It is really, really close, but I'm going to go ahead and make a quick adjustment uh, in this axis as well. So I've made an adjustment now, and um, I'm sitting here looking on the light on here. It, it's kind of hard to tell for sure, but it, to me it looks like an even amount up and down there on camera. It kind of looks like there's more at the top, but I think that's just got to do with reflections. Um, all right, so I'm going to come back around now, and I'm just going to check uh, this way again, uh, just to make sure nothing has changed. And uh, if it looks good, we'll get out the indicators and check it with the, uh, the spindle square that way. So we've got the uh, spindle square in here now with the dial indicator method. And uh, again, this tool is made by Boring Research. You can uh, check them out at boringresearch.com. Uh, they sell this uh, set up here. I think it's $85. Uh, so uh, basically just a one of my viewers has a company that uh, he's making these, kind of a little uh, small business uh, venture. Uh, and anyway, it looks like a pretty nice tool. It's uh, got four different places that you can put the indicators in here, uh, depending on how, what you're wanting to do. Now, the most accurate way to do this is going to be to put them as far apart because you're measuring an angle 
and obviously the the greater the distance between one end and the other, uh, the more you're going to be able to measure and the more you're going to be able to potentially fine tune. But if you're doing a vise or something, you may not have this much width, so you can adjust these indicators in and out, put them in different slots as needed. Now one thing I'd caution you on is that you need to have, uh, in the, if it's in the first one on this side, it needs to be on the first one on this side. Uh, because if you don't, your distance is going to be different from one end to the other and your readings won't work out. So, um, you know, the, the indicators are in there right now, uh, but first thing we need to do is we need to calibrate this and make sure that we have our zeros because we don't know that these are exactly the same height. They're just dropped down into a hole and there could be differences from one indicator to the other. So the way we're gonna do that is he actually ships a little uh, rare earth magnet with this thing that is <laughs> stuck up in there, really strong. But uh, we're just gonna drop that on the table and uh, make sure it's clean. I got little metal shavings on my milling machine table here. We're gonna raise this up. I may have to reposition that little magnet when we get to the right height here, it's close. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it to zero. In fact, uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zero it out kind of over here because I wanna have a little bit of, a, of a tension or whatever in that indicator so that uh, I've got some travel. You know, right there I would only had about, what, 10 thousandths travel. So if, I, if it was out more than 10 thousandths, it would go off and it wouldn't be a good measurement. So uh, we're just gonna, let's loosen the bezel, bezel up on this indicator. Well, the little clip fell off. I'll pick it up. We're gonna move this around and uh, zero it right there. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna indicate off the same one. I'm gonna flip my whole uh, rig around here. Hang on a minute. All right, I had a little, had to adjust something there, so I'm gonna re-zero this, okay? So now I'm gonna roll this around and we're gonna zero this one. And I'm gonna have to go around to the back side to do this one. You won't be able to see it on camera, but I will zero it out and you'll, it'll be calibrated. So I know you can't see this. You're just gonna have to trust me that I'm doing this uh, correctly here. Pull these little things off again. All right, so that one is zero, the other one is zero. And I'm just gonna come back around to this one again and double check it and it is zero. Now, one thing to notice here is my zeros are in a little bit different position and that just has to do with how these, these uh, indicators are seeding down into this block. It's not a big deal. Uh, they're both calibrated. So uh, now what we're gonna do is uh, come down here and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna raise the table up and I'm just gonna put them on zero. And if you look on this one, we are about one, two, three and a half thousandths um, different on this side than this side. So uh, this will be in my head going this way. So let me get my wrenches out and we're gonna make a quick adjustment and get this thing dialed in right where it needs to be. All right guys, I was playing around with this and um, I re-zeroed things where I actually have the zeros going up now, more or less. So this one's here and this one's here, you can see Right now we're off by about five thousandths. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna pull this one in about half that amount. So about right there. 
So if you look, you know, I'm off a little bit on the one, but I'm just going to lower the table now. I'm going to bring this one to zero, and this one's on zero as well. So we're trammed in. So it's a fairly easy thing. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just looking on this one, and I'm moving half of my error out, and then re-zeroing things, and uh, pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead. We'll turn it uh, 90 degrees and do the other side here. So I turn it 90 degrees, I got it set on here, and I haven't touched anything. Just using the cylinder square, you know, this one's on zero, this one's maybe a quarter of a thousandth off. Each one of those lines is a half thousandth. Uh, so <laughs> the cylinder square got that one pretty darn close. Uh, and the other one was within really two and a half thousandths of being uh, square, which was probably good enough for most things, uh, particularly over this kind of distance so that's something else to take into consideration with doing this if you're if you know those right there are about six inches apart if you're using a four inch cutter though uh, your errors it's not going to be off as much as it is if they're closer together so uh, anyway i think you see how this tool works it's a it's a very easy tool to use uh, and it will really get it tuned in exactly like you want it well, as long as we're tramming things in, I might as well go ahead and get my uh, vise trammed in square or, or parallel with the table here. So to do this, I've just basically mounted a test indicator. I'm just using a stare at last word indicator here. I've got it mounted into my spindle. It's just on a little uh, rod here. And I've got it where it's just going to touch the top of my vise, uh, which should be ground pretty flat uh, to go across. So what I'm going to do is just come in here. I'm going to get on more or less the, the end of the vise down here. Uh, and we're just gonna go in and move our table out until we zero it. And now we're just gonna roll the table down. And as you can see, as it goes, it's falling off a little bit. And I'm gonna go to about the extent of the, of the, the travel on the indicator. And what I have done here is, is I've got this bolt on this side uh, fairly tight and this one here is snug but it's a little bit loose so I can basically pivot this vise off of this side which is why I'm starting on this side because when I bump it around this end is the end that's going to move. So what I'm going to do is just basically take a little uh, dead blow hammer here and we're going to bump the vise whichever way it needs to go. I'm going to take it to where that dial's on zero. Then we'll go back to the end of the table down here. I'm going to re-zero it. I'm just moving the whole table in and out this way. Now I'm going to go all the way. To, well, I got a little bit. It, it jumped on me just a little bit. I don't know if you saw that. It jumped about a half a thousandth when I started going. So I'm just going to all right, we're just going to go with it, I think. We'll go all the way to the end of the table now. And we're off by, what is that, about two thousandths. So uh, again, we're just going to bump the, it back to zero. I'm going to snug this one down a little bit now and we're going to go back to the other side. And we're on zero again. So now my vise is parallel with uh, the, the table. So there you go guys, uh, tramming 101. We've trammed the head in, uh, in both axes, we've trammed the vise in. And uh, what have I learned? Well, uh, my cylinder square method, it works pretty good. It's not exactly perfect, but you know what? For the majority of the jobs that I'm doing, uh, that cylinder square trick, it is quick, it is easy, and it works. But when I need to dial it in and get it exactly right, 
um, I can go use that uh, the spindle square that I got from Boring Research and we can dial it in. And that's also an easy method. Uh, I will probably use both methods in my shop just depending on what I'm doing, what kind of job I'm doing. Uh, a lot of times uh, what I'll do is I'll just go grab that spindle square before I do an important job and I'll just check it because you know as you use this mill, uh, your head can can move even if it's a little bit tight. You know, you got pressures on it, you got things going on in the shop. Uh, you, it needs to be checked from time to time. And the spindle square is a good way of doing that, but when you really need to dial it in, I really like that indicator method as well. Uh, as far as the vice goes, uh, this little test indicator method, this is what I use all the time. It is quick and easy. It does not take a lot of time to tram a vice in. You saw me, you know, less than five minutes, I have this vice put on here and uh, trammed in. Uh, unlike a lot of people, I take my vice on and off the mill machine a lot, depending on the job that I'm doing. I'm not afraid to take it off. I know some people, they get their vice trammed in, they don't ever want to take it off because they don't want to have to tram it in again. I actually don't worry about that. Like I said, it's a quick and easy process. And uh, I think it's good. Again, you need to check the tram on your vice because it can move over time. It can, uh, things can come out of adjustment. The bolts, even though it's tight, it can move, particularly if you uh, are doing some heavy milling or something. You got a lot of forces going on here as well. So two quick, easy ways to check both the head and the vise to get everything trammed in. This machine is ready to go and uh, we're about to do some machining and that's gonna be another video for a project that I'm getting ready to start on. Thanks for watching guys. We'll talk to you later.